Greetings, fellow painters. We have a bit of a painting challenge today. When it comes to beginner painters, the one thing that I hear most often is they're most worried about mixing colors. They're not sure what colors to mix or how to mix them and what ratio. And that's usually why I recommend trying to get as many colors that you can possibly afford when you're starting out. Now I know the cost of getting a whole bunch of paint might be an issue for some people, and it's something that I haven't had to face for years since I have a whole lot of paint. So I decided to try a little challenge and paint a miniature using as few of colors as possible. My goal was 10 colors and actually came one under, and that's basically what we're, go we're gonna be doing here, using as few of colors as possible and doing a whole lot of mixing and getting really creative with our mixes so uh, we have a wide variety of colors to use on our miniature. The miniature that we're painting today is a Reaper miniature. He is Reeve somebody somebody. I'm gonna call him Reeve George Christopher Keanu. And as I've been talking, we already started on his cape, robe, jacket, whatever we're gonna call it. And we used a mix of flat red and violet. The violet is to shade our red, also gives a nice rich color. Alternative colors we could have used in place of violet would be a very dark brown, or actually we could have used a dark blue as well. From there we work up to our base coat using just the flat red. And because reds are so transparent, we can actually get a couple different transition layers out of the flat red, uh, building it up more layers on the base coat area and less on the areas where we want a little bit of shade. From there, we're gonna add some flesh base to our flat red to highlight it. Other options here would be, uh, some people use white, which I really don't like myself. Uh, yellow would also work, but I don't have that planned in my paint scheme. So I went with the flesh color that I'm already gonna use on the miniature. Uh, you can use different flesh colors for highlighting red. This one is not the best, just has a little bit of an, an odd shade to it that didn't mix too well to the red. So that's why I'm keeping it very light and I don't want to bleach out the red too much. For his shoulder wrap, we are gonna go with violet. And to shade that, we've mixed in some black. It may seem simple and obvious to just add black to any color to shade it and white to any color to highlight it. However, however depending on the color of the paint you're using, uh, black quite often really dulls and muddies the color and white can bleach it out. So there's only certain situations where you wanna use those for highlighting and shading. Usually very dark colors or very light colors. Uh, however, when you have a limited palette here, you have to kind of use what you have available. So. We're gonna use these colors to highlight and shade, but we have to use them sparingly so we don't have the muddy or bleach out problem. I did put down a base coat of just straight violet. Somehow I forgot to record that part, I'm sorry. And then we're adding a white for the highlights. Since our violet is so dark, we are using small amounts of the white added for the highlights. Alternative colors could have been, we could have tried pink by mixing in some of the red if we wanted to change the tone of the violets to more of a purple. Also, we possibly could have used some of the flush base as well. Remember what I said about adding black to colors tend to muddy them? Well, we can actually use that to our benefit. So I've added black to medium blue here to create more of a, a navy color because I didn't want everything on this reed to be very bright. And then to highlight it, we are gonna add white to this mixture instead of going working our way up to just straight medium blue and then adding white. So using just three colors, you can actually get a wide variety of different shades of that color just by adding more or less black and depending on when you add the white highlight.
for beginner painters, what I normally recommend for a palette is uh, one each of all your primary colors, black, white, uh, perhaps metallic, depending on what you're working on, and as many brown colors that you can afford because you've got a lot of variety and you can do a lot of different things with different shades of brown. For the trim on the jacket, we are going with sort of a, a gold color, not golden material, but golden tone. And starting off with a base coat of flat earth and then we've added yellow ochre to that for the highlights. One color that I shockingly did not use and would have been most helpful was my favorite color, Camo Black Brown by Vallejo. Very useful, very dark brown. Decided to challenge myself and not to use it, so I simply had to make up my own, very simply by mixing flat earth with black. When you're working with a limited palette, one thing you can do to make colors look different is to apply them in different ways. For example, on the hat here, I'm using a bit of stippling to give it a more leather look. You can also highlight uh, something one way and then use the exact same colors on something else, but instead use those colors like as a wash or as a dry brush or something like that. And those subtle differences, differences in application will make the colors look slightly different as well. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky when it comes to his skin. I only have one skin color here, but I still need, need a shade color and a highlight color. Now ideally, we want to use like at least a red-brown. We have some variety of colors we can use, but I didn't have a red-brown. I don't even have a dark brown, so I use a very complicated mixture. Uh, red for some warmness to the flesh, uh, flat earth for some brown to shade it, which wasn't dark enough, so I had to add a touch of black and all that added to what will be our base coat, the flesh base. If you want to go real old school painting, it's said that you actually only need three colors to paint flesh. You need white, yellow ochre, and red brown, and that's just generic colors, not specific names, because the exact color is used very depending on the painter. But by mixing those together, you can get a incredibly wide variety of skin tones and then just by mixing more of the red brown in to get the shade and more of the white to get the highlights uh, you can do amazing things. From my experience it works a little bit better with oil paints but it can be pulled off with acrylics. Now here's where things get tricky once again, painting the 
what would normally be metallic bits on the miniature. Would have been a lot easier if I just broke out the metallics, but wanted to challenge myself, try to keep the palette limited here. The big issue is we're using yellow ochre and we already used that to paint the cloth areas on the jacket. So we have to apply this in a different method so it doesn't look exactly like the jacket. We still added white for the highlights, however, I kind of overdid it. Uh, I only added a little for the jacket uh, with plans of adding more here. Secondly, for the shade color, rather, rather than just flat earth, I mixed in some flat red with it, so we have a red brown. Also, I'm applying this as a wash rather than the uh, first initial shade layer below the base coat. So the different application also helps because the wash is going to uh, deposit a lot more of that red color than painting over it would leave. For gray metal, it should be obvious that we can use black and white to create different shades of gray. Uh, didn't have any parts of this miniature that were a really good example to show what you can do with it. Also, I'm keeping it very simple on this miniature because the parts were so small and this isn't really about non-metal metallic painting or sky earth stuff or anything like that. And you can add browns to warm up your grays or blues to uh, cool them down, which if you want to use that on weapons, you can get a, you know, a whole lot of really nice effects. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who do amazing stuff with non-metal metallics. If that is your style, you can definitely do that and still only utilize a very small palette of colors. And there is our finished Reeve, one under our 10 color limit. And actually I could have done this in eight because the violet color, we could have actually eliminated that and ended up just mixing red and blue together and mix uh, end up with a similar color. I wasn't sure what colors I was going to use on this miniature at the beginning, so that's why I ended up using the violet. So nothing too fancy schmancy here. I uh, made them a little overly bright because I wanted to use different possible combinations to show you what can be done with a limited palette. And this color balance is a little bit off and also a few areas here and there could use some fixing, but that's not the point. The point is, yes, you can paint with a limited palette. Uh, it just takes a, a bit more creativity and understanding what colors can be mixed uh, with what other colors to get different combinations. So painting with a limited palette takes a little bit more experience and also a little bit more research to make sure that you're adding colors that can be added together to make new colors. So I think that is about it. Thanks for watching. Go out there and buy a few colors or a whole bunch of colors, whatever fits your budget. But most important thing, get painting. Thanks for watching. Johnny, don't go, it's too dangerous. I don't care. Why doesn't Johnny care? A film by Bell Labs.